going but live, we're going right, live now. right meow. And let's pull, we'll it, pull over it over up. where we can see your face. Hey guys. Oh God. Happy Bye. Sunday. Says, Meeting is now streaming live on Facebook. Hello everyone and happy Sunday. Um, it's a beautiful Sunday in the neighborhood. And we have one of the most beautiful, um, amazing, most resourceful, most one of our most favorite humans on the planet joining us today, which we're super excited about. So we're gonna wait for some of you guys to jump on I'm to make sure that we up. have make sure that everything's working. Over here. Liz is here. Right. Hey, sister. Um, Dane okay. is here. Okay, people Kathy? are jumping on. Cool. Jenny's cool. here. Kathy's here. Oh, yeah, you guys. Happy so Sunday. So we're going to look a little weird because I know that this is where we're streaming from, but we're, we're going to try to follow all the comments over here on this other computer. So that's why I'm not ignoring anybody over here. Sorry. Yes. yes. Oh my God. Yes. So welcome to everybody. For most of the people joining us today, our next guest needs no introduction at all. If you guys know us at all, you guys know how much we know and love Pam Rousseau with Perfectly Holistic. And I'm so excited that um, we're you're here joining today. us today to, yeah, to chat about the, the last Sunday of uh, National Immunization Awareness Month. Yes. And you've been you've been so resourceful to us, especially when it comes to uh, vaccination detox, which is something that we weren't really familiar with. So yeah, um, this is going to be a great discussion, I think, for a lot of us who may not know the options that are available and who um, uh, have much to learn about. About vaccines in their kitties. Your line of work, And yeah. what they can do um, after vaccines, maybe even before vaccines, maybe the protocol to follow. Um, so this week or this month, if you guys have um, been uh, joining us, following our page, we have been interviewing um, many experts in the field of, um, of pets and of cats specifically, and we save the best for last because um, Pam is not just going to talk to us as the veterinarians that we um, interviewed did about the importance of vaccines, about the importance of not over vaccinating our cats, um, about which vaccines we need, um, but also about cleansing our cats from the um, harsh side effects that often come with uh, vaccines. So thank you so much for being here with us, Pam. Pam, can you give us a short yes. intro? For anybody that doesn't know you, tell us who you are, your beautiful area of expertise, and just kind of how you came to be on this journey that brings us all to you today. Well, first of all, happy National Holistic Pet Day. Yes, yes, it yes. is. I forgot. Yes. Thank you. What a better day to have you on. I know. I know. It's so cool. I didn't even know there was such a day that existed, but how cool oh, that it's getting that some more. variety. Um, and thank you guys for inviting me. I, I love hanging out with you as we've done before and just so grateful for your support uh, and endorsement and the opportunity to help spread the word you know, uh, about alternatives for our cats and keeping them healthy. Yeah, so really I, so, the gratitude yeah. is very mutual. Yeah, okay, so my journey begins probably about 2006, to, no, probably earlier than that, probably like 2004. Um, I had a foot injury that would not heal using traditional osteopathic medicine techniques, okay? So podiatry and all that, didn't work. And I was in a boot for months trying to get this thing to heal. And this, this thing went on for like, I wanna say at least a good year. And being so frustrated with not getting results and being active like I am, I was like, there's, I, I don't like this, but I don't know what to do. I was just, you know, the next step was surgery, which I was like, no, I'm needle phobic. I don't want to go into the hospital. I don't want to do that route. And we were on vacation in Vancouver, British Columbia, and driving through Chinatown. And we were looking at, you know, there's like a market and all these signs and like herbs and plants and stuff with signs in Chinese and English. And I don't know, it was just like a light bulb went off in my head. And I thought, hmm, when I get back to Houston, I need to look up a Chinese doctor. I need to find a Chinese doctor. There was something inside of me that said, if a Chinese medicine didn't work, they wouldn't be doing it for thousands of years, right? And so exactly. when I got back 
I started investigating or looking for someone who did acupuncture. And for, for my friends who know me, I'm the person that runs out of the room when somebody has to have a shot. Okay, we call it SHOT. We don't even say the word, okay? <laughs> I, don't, <laughs> I don't like needles. I don't like shots. And just the thought of having needles put into me scared the bejesus out of me, okay? So I dragged my husband to this appointment, met this sweet Chinese lady who's, who was actually an MD in China, has moved here. Um, she had been here for probably 20 years already. She did magic on me. And within eight weeks, my foot was completely healed. Eight weeks. After a year of suffering. With say, after months of being in a boot, after months of dealing with this injury and a previous injury, that the same injury on the other foot had surgery just maybe six years earlier, five years earlier. And they said, oh, it'll never happen on the other foot. And I'm like, well, good. Because I don't, I don't ever want to go through this again. So it really opened my eyes, and I'm like, okay, what else is out there that's natural that I don't know about that I need to learn about? So I was introduced to chiropractic work on a regular basis. I was introduced to working with a naturopath doctor and a natural health practitioner uh, for various things, and ended up taking my cats to these people for several times for food sensitivities and, and issues like that and realized uh, that, wow, these techniques work on pets. <laughs> Why didn't my brain even consider that option previously? And the naturopath clinic that I was working or going to used muscle testing and energy medicine. It wasn't invasive, there were no needles, <laughs> you know, nothing scary. And you, they use biofeedback and things like that. And I'm like, wow, this is so fascinating. And so fast forward, years later, I actually took a class on muscle testing with these amazing ladies over there. And it was so life-changing and like major light bulbs went off. I'm like, holy cow, what power is in my own hands? What we have this ability to understand and listen to our bodies. They know what they need. There is a way to, for them to tell us what we need. And it's muscle testing. It's, you know, applied kinesiology, energy testing. It's kind of all under one big uh, umbrella. And so I took another class in muscle testing. I started teaching muscle testing. It was such a life-changing experience that it's like, wow, I can figure out what I need personally, supplements, you know, what, what things would benefit me, what don't. And then I started using that with my own cats. What kind of supplement do they need? One of them had kidney disease. What kind of supplement support can we use with her? You know, food sensitivities that may come up. And just little by little, it started chipping away at this preconceived idea that we've walked around with for years that allopathic medicine and traditional veterinary medicine was the end all be all when in reality it's not necessarily the end all be all. There are so many other ways to promote healing without drugs, without, you know, surgeries, without chemicals and things like that. So it, it was life changing. And then fast forward to 2014, um, my husband and I were going to go on a, a road trip to Montana. We were taking three out of the five cats at the time. And we decided that we would board the two oldest ones. And the local cat boarding facility where we live required updated vaccinations. Now I had learned previous in previous years, recent years, that it's not good to over vaccinate your cats. You know, it's not healthy. There's too many risks involved. Chances are they have been immunized, they're protected because, hello, I was the dutiful cat parent that drug them to the vet every year for annual vaccinations. And I'm, you know, I shudder now. And I, you know, it's like, ugh, I wish I had known better. Um, so I drug my feet and I waited until like the very last 
date that I could possibly go get them updated because I had to turn in their proof of vaccination within a certain period of time from the trip. So I'll never forget that day. It was rainy, drug them over there, Snow Bear and Hershey. I took them to a low cost vaccination clinic, you know, that was close by. Trusting that these people had their health and their best intentions in mind, you know. Well, within 24 hours, they started having the adverse reactions, mostly upper respiratory and all of that kind of stuff. Hershey seemed to do okay. He, he kind of came out of it really fast. Snow Bear did not. Snow Bear started to swell up like hives. So, you know, we're freaking out. We're trying everything we can to, you know, remedy that through, uh, at the time, APHIS, which is a homeopathic remedy. And it started, and he started to improve. But fast forward, I mean, he never fully, he didn't get quite back to normal. And a few days later, uh, he woke me up at four in the morning and something wasn't right. And he was twitching around in the bed and he, I, he was just kind of like really agitated. So I pick him up and I bring him into the bathroom and put him on the floor thinking maybe he has to go to the bathroom, put him in a litter box. He turned around and he had, he started to tremor and then he collapsed and he died right in front of me. And I was so heartbroken and sh in shock. Like, what the heck happened? Um, talk about guilt, because you could see from the date of the vaccine when he was acting completely fine, and then the, the downhill adverse effects, it's like, holy cow, what have I done? And it was, it was awful. And nobody should have to go through that. And you know, it's like something in the back of my mind always said, I know this isn't right, but my hands are tied. I know this isn't right, but I have to do this. Why am I doing this? So it's when you go through situations like that, number one, you have to know that there, there's always a reason. Even if it feels like the worst life experience you'll ever have, there's always a reason behind something happening. And you have to learn from it. And fast forward a few months later, I did take animal communication because I was so, I was so heartbroken and felt so much guilt that I really wanted to connect with him and just let him know, I am so sorry. I feel like I did that. And his message to me was, it was my time. It was meant to happen that way. I know you did everything you could, and this is not your fault, but you have a mission now going forward. And this is where you need to go and you need to show people how to do a better job and educate them on ways that they can holistically help their cats live longer, healthier lives using natural remedies and natural alternatives. Everything you have learned has been for a reason up to this point. And I'm gonna be on the other side guiding you. And he is to this day. And he's like my biggest cheerleader. And I feel his presence. It's, it's amazing. But you know, getting through that time was awful. But you just have to understand, even though we don't have all the answers, just like when Mr. Biddles passed away so unexpectedly, you're like, holy cow, what did, what did we do? What happened? He was fine. And you know, you're thinking, what did we do? Is it my fault, et cetera? And they have another plan. We don't always know what their plan is and their, pur their purpose, that animals come into our life with a life, with their own little mission, with their own little purpose. And when we learn to tap into that and, and honor that, even if it's not in our plan, they have a purpose for being in our lives. And for Snow, it was really to teach me, okay, this is, you've had this other career for so long, but you need to go in this direction now. And this is where you're, this is where you're going to be a light. And this is how I'm going to help you and guide you. And, you know, it's time to teach other people what you've learned. Well, so, to that point, I mean, the, the story of Snow Bear, <clears throat> I remember reading that on your website for anyone who hasn't been to perfectlyholistic.com yet. That whole story is there and it's so hard to read and even hearing it again, it's so hard to listen to yeah. again. It really resonates. 
Um, but there's a bunch of comments coming. I just want you to know uh, your light does shine bright. So many people are just saying, Pam, you've helped so much. You really are. Just so much gratitude for you. Uh, purple also looks very good on you, by the way. <laughs> yeah. the general consensus of that. But talk to us a little bit about, you know, especially sometimes I think that, you know, we learn our hardest lessons through something or our best lessons through something painful. Tragic. And it starts us on a different path. And it, and, 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 it, and you know it, right? I, every time we see you, I just love your energy. And I love that this is, you know, what you're doing is what you are meant to be doing. Um, tell us a little bit about, you know, talking about vaccines and this heartbreaking experience. What do you think about them now? Yeah. What changes did you make moving forward um, from that experience? Obviously this is the beginning because that was 2014, right? You started um, uh, perfectly holistic five years ago, almost the day we did. Um, yes. So that, so, so it was that next year that you started your, your company and really started spreading the news and, and your light and all of your, um, all of your resources that you, that you have an offer um, mm -hmm. to cat parents, specifically cat parents, which is what we really, really love because there's a lot of, you know, pet, pet people out there that work mainly with dogs, but you specifically, you, you give your energy to cats and, and we love that. But so, so um, when it comes to vaccines, what do you personally, I mean, we know like everybody has a different protocol, right? We've, we've interviewed two different veterinarians. Um, we've asked what their protocols are in, in uh, vaccinating cats, what they would do um, and what they suggest to their clients. And it's actually a lot different from what we do um, with our cats. So we want to know what it is that you do when it comes to your cats. Well, first of all, I, I only give the core requirement, you know, so when they're kittens, I, I do not recommend any vaccination prior to like at least 10 weeks of age. You know, get their immune system stronger, let them put on some weight, let them, you know, grow a little bit before you start injecting any kind of vaccine into them and, and you know. And then the other thing is only do one at a time. There That's is a big one. A, it's a huge, and I didn't know. Um, and so that's one do combo shots. They, yeah, they, they offer the cocktail yeah. shot now, like yeah. the because combo shot of everything yeah. one. And we get every, like all the time, every week we have people saying, I got the, I got my cats vaccinated. Now they are all like really freaking out. Like it's an immediate, immediate vaccinosis. Yeah. 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 Sorry, yeah, so you, you learn, you only do one at a time and you do them at least four weeks apart. Okay. And uh, you know, there's, in some cases, if the cat lives more outside and they're at a greater risk, you know, maybe you titer. I, I would titer before I revaccinated ever. Uh, I know that the rabies is the, the difficult one to get around because of the laws, but thank God for Dr. John Robb and protectthepets.com those laws are starting to change so people really get involved in your area get involved in your state so we can get those laws changed so yes. that tigers can be accepted in lieu of a rabies vaccine um the problem begins when they either do them too young or they do too many at one time because it overstimulates the immune system and one of the things that i learned even if you don't see an adverse reaction within the first 24 hours Sometimes it can be 30 days later. And, and then you the, don't know where it came from. Yeah. You don't know where it came from. Something, you know, something starts to happen. Maybe they start to get hot spots or they start itching or something, you know, going on that's, that's odd. You know, something's off. And the vets very rarely connect the dots between, oh, well, that vaccine was about a month ago. You know? Right. Uh, so... And here, I'm not knocking shelters. Shelters are an amazing place and they have such a great purpose, but they are often over vaccinating their animals before they adopt them out. Yeah. You know? And very young too. Very young, very young. And so I would recommend if, you know, work with, an, with a shelter who is knowledgeable about vaccinosis and maybe they can titer and sit, if, especially if it was a full grown cat that was brought in. You don't know how many vaccines that cat had. Titer yeah. them before you just go revaccinate them, please. It's just not worth the health issues down the road, you know, right. because 
they can be very, very severe and life-threatening. Yeah. Um, well, and, and I just want to mention for those of you guys that um, are, are here and you might not know what a titer test is. So a titer test is a, a blood draw that your vet can do um, in the clinic or um, send it off to, um, as, as Pam said, Dr. John Robb with protectthepets.com. They actually mm -hmm. have a way that you can do this with your vet and mail it, mail it in for a lesser cost. But um, it's, a, it's an antibody test. So a, a lot of us know what antibodies are now because of COVID, but a lot of people didn't know before COVID what antibodies are. But, um, but antibodies tell, tell, uh, can tell your vet or you if your cat is still um, immune to the said disease, right? So they still have the, the protection in their body that is protecting them from that. So what, um, so I, I love, I love that laws are starting to change very slowly. I wish they would happen faster, but, mm -hmm. um, but that is one of the, in my opinion, and it's just an opinion, I think one of the leading causes of disease in our, in our animals is, um, over, over vaccinating because they're already protected. And then we get another vaccine. And that happened with our cat that now lives with autoimmune disease that you have Helpless been so great or so, so <laughs> amazing and, um, and his transformation of health. Um, but yes, so, uh, so that's what a, that's what a titer test is. Yeah. We've got to carry on. <laughs> Do, do carry on. We do have a couple uh, good questions coming in though that your opinion would be valued on. Um, and that is uh, where to go. Uh, oh, Leslie asked, is it okay to never vaccinate? I've heard the first one only and that's it. But what if you just don't ever? Okay, well, I'm gonna be real crystal clear and honest with you guys, full transparency. Yes. My, my baby girl, Aylin, who is now five, she got her first round of kitten shots. I didn't do a double, I didn't do another round because she's indoors. She lives with, you know, four other cats who are completely fine and, you know, they don't roam around outside. They're not exposed to various diseases and illnesses that cats can get. And Dr. Will Falconer taught me something that, you know, cats don't, Older cats don't die from these diseases that we vaccinate for. Right. Um, you know, if your cat is is not going to be exposed to some of these risks, why why go, you know, put all this stuff inside of them? Yes, do the first round because you never know what kind of genetics they bring from their mother or immunity from their mother and all the antibodies that's passed on from them. So yes, get the first round. That would be wise. But I didn't, I didn't get A in the second round of the FDRCP. Um, and in fact, I dug my heels in and refused the rabies vaccine. And I had to sign a waiver. I was in tears on the phone with the vet because I, we took her in to get spayed. And the vet called, my husband said, we're not doing the rabies vaccine. And the vet called me and she says, okay, what's this about? We're skipping the rabies. I'm like, yes, we are. And here's why. I just lost my cat, Snow Bear, to I'm getting rabies vaccine and I can't go through that. I was a mess, you know, <laughs> she's indoors. Her exposure is like nil to zero, you know? So I don't want to put her body through that risk. It's not worth it to me. It's not worth yeah. it to her, you, you know? Yeah. And who's to say she would be okay, but she's having a surgery. And anytime you have a surgery, you are going to be stressing the immune system. So I don't think that that's a very wise time to be giving a cat a vaccine. Right, right. That's well, no, I'm, 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 I'm exactly the same. We're actually, that, that's, that's exactly what, we, what we've done with our newest, right? So Friday and Zorro two years ago, and now uh, Jack and Madison, same. They're 24 weeks, so they're five, well, they're five months old now and um, aren't scheduled to, to, to get their FBRCP until next month and um and it's actually we we decided and I, I would love to know what your thoughts are on this um if you have a because you're so holistic minded we did this with friday and zoro and we're gonna we plan to do it with um with jack and madison as well but uh no sodes versus um versus the non-adjuvanted um vaccines or the live vaccines like what are your thoughts I think that's great. If you have a vet that has the ability to use those nosodes in lieu of 
then absolutely use that because they can still well, for anyone who's not familiar with nozodes, can you just give a little summary of what what well, that is? It's a homeopathic remedy in, in that particular case, from what I understand, it's like comprised of actual disease tissue from those, from those uh, diseases they're supposed to protect you from that are made into a homeopathic remedy. And so when you give that to the cat, it's like their body, it's training their body to you know, kind of produce those antibodies against something. Right. So yeah, it's very interesting how that works. But let me also give, you know, our listeners and, and followers out there another suggestion. If you are going to have to give your cat an updated vaccine or a rabies vaccine that, you know, for some reason, you know, your vet is demanding and, you know, you can't get around it then there are actually homeo homeopathic remedies that you can use as preventative for adverse reactions. So um, for example, if you're gonna get to do an FBRCP vaccine, you can take a dose of Thuya 200, I'm sorry, Thuya 30C, okay, before and after the vaccine, and then follow that with milk thistle for like seven days twice a day so that their liver can process all of that junk out of their body really quicker right um, if you're going to have to get a rabies vaccine use a listen 30c remedy right before 30c yes because 30c is when you do it like right when they're being vaccinated if they are if if they come to me and they have a chronic vaccinosis issue that I can trace back to a rabies vaccine, then I tend to find that the 200 C is the remedy that tests well for that. But for okay, like a awesome. vaccine, it's usually this the 30 C is all they need. And then plus the milk thistle to help their liver process all of those toxins out of their body. Okay. I love that. That was going to be one of my questions because, um, because I, it was Dr. Roman, I believe that we um, interviewed uh, a couple weeks ago and she said about, she talked about using it prior to the vaccine, mm -hmm. actually, you know, doing a detoxification beforehand and after. So that was a question I wanted to ask you, but here's a really important question. I think for all of our viewers, um, that, that will definitely want to know this, right? Because a lot of us made all the mistakes, all of us, right. Made all the mistakes, got our cats vaccinated. Now they're like, you know, 16 years old, or now they're 10 years old, or maybe it's, you know, five years later when they had their vaccine. Is it ever too late to detoxify them um, if they need a, a detoxification? No, no. In fact, I would almost recommend maybe even every six months or even once a year that all cats go through some type of general liver detox protocol just because the environment that we live in is so toxic, our food is toxic, the air we breathe is toxic, you know? And if you think about even us as humans, I mean, our bodies need detox as well. Our liver can get sluggish and it can cause all these, you know, a cascade effect of other health issues. But even cats, because they are much smaller, they weigh, you know, six to maybe 20 pounds. And right. they're exposed to the same kind of toxins and, you know, their food is either. Well, and even more so, you know, we, I was, I was watching the, I think you watched it too. Um, a, um, an interview this morning, a podcast this morning with Dr. Karen Becker, Rodney Habib and Susan Michaels. And they were talking about how, you know, the, the chemicals that we use in our homes, the fragrances, the, the cleaners, mm -hmm. all of that is more, um, our cats from the studies, they show that it is, it's 10 times, like it's so much more concentrated. found and concentrated in our cat's bodies yeah. than it is in our bodies or a dog or a dog's body because our cats are constantly grooming and everything, every chemical that we put in our home that, uh, you know, lands on the ground or, or flies in the air, whatever it is, whether they're in, um, uh, breathing it in or it's on the ground, they are constantly cleaning themselves and they are ingesting all of these chemicals. Yeah. Dr. Becker called them furry little Swiffers. Um, Noelle has a question. I mean, because they just pick up everything. everything. And it's really, it's really enlightening to realize how much the things that we do in our dailiness, how much that really does impact them. Yeah. Noelle asks, we're talking about detox, detoxification from 
uh, vaccines, which was something that is relatively new to us, thanks to you realizing that it can be done even years later and seeing the difference it makes to actually go through that. Noelle is asking, what about charcoal as a detox? Charcoal doesn't actually detox. It binds chemical, it, it binds things in the blood and the body and like a chelator and pulls them out through the digestive tract, but it doesn't detox the liver. And the liver is the main organ that filters the blood and ha you know it has different levels of detoxification. Um, I think there's like three different levels if I remember right. And you know the liver produces enzymes that break down the fat soluble toxins. There's water soluble toxins, and then once those are broken down, metabolized, they're flushed out through the lymphatic system, and then all the drainage pathways of the body. So the yeah. lymphatic system, if the lymphatic system is sluggish then you are going to hold those toxins and waste materials in the body for a much longer period of time. And that's when you have cytokine storms, you know, that's when you have the horrible side effects because the body is having trouble getting rid of everything. So maybe the kidneys aren't, you know, able to keep up with flushing things out because they also filter the blood. If right. the liver is sluggish, you know, it's, it's having trouble pushing out and, you know, the liver can actually regenerate itself. It can build new liver cells. So you give it some milk thistle, which it loves, and it can build new missile, um, cells, new liver cells. Um, you want to make sure that the cat is pooping. You know, we love to talk about poop on, on our, this channel. So, <laughs> we know it, girl. A lot about health, you know. So if the cat's yeah. constipated, well, guess what? It's not pushing all that waste out of the body fast enough, and that's getting reabsorbed back into the bloodstream. So you know, there's just oh, and here's skin. People forget about skin. So like, if cats get the rashes or they start licking, if they have red spots or hair loss, if they develop fatty lipomas under the skin, which is, you know, like little bumps or whatever, it's just fat tissue. Well, guess what stores toxins? Fat cells. Oh yeah. yeah. Damn it. Yes, I know, right? <laughs> so when the body can't get rid of enough toxins, it stores them in the fat cells of the body. And the skin is the largest detox organ in the body, right? It, it, is, it means it's, large, it's, it's the largest organ in the body. And when the liver can't detox through normal channels, things start to come out through the skin. Or, yeah. the, you know, I mean, that's the body's way of trying to get rid of stuff. So, you know, when you start to see these things, that's a clue that the liver is, the liver is struggling. There's stagnation in the body. The lymphatic system isn't able to really push stuff out. So we have to provide the tools to support that process. Yeah, I like that. And so, yeah, from my, from my um, knowledge or, or it, limited knowledge when it comes to uh, charcoal, um, it's, more of a, it's more of a kind of a detoxifier, if you will, for the GI tract than it is yeah. the, the liver and the kidneys, right? Yeah. So question about Booyah. Um, it comes from Kennelly. Hi, Kennelly. Hi, Kennelly. Happy Sunday. Uh, she said, um, it's Kennelly with Phantom. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, she said, would 200 C3 be, be enough for dogs as well? Not sure if, if you know this. And also for the same time frame suggested for cats. Do you have any idea? Uh, I mean, it's, the same, it's the same principle. So on the, on the dogs that I work with, yes, I work on dogs, but I don't promote that because I'd be overwhelmed with dogs. Um, if they resonate with vaccinosis and it's like, you know, the rabies vaccine, for example, or, you know, their parvo or whatever it is, dog vaccines, I can't remember what they are off the top of my head. Thuya 200C might be indicated if it's a chronic long-term, you know, immune system issue. Um, and one of the things you have to remember about homeopathy, it's not, the dose is not weight dependent. Like in, you know, medications and supplements are for humans are really the doses 
are adjusted by body weight, typically, okay? Homeopathy is energetic. So it, you don't need more of a substance to get the same effect. And, right. you know, Dr. Falconer also taught me that, you know, the same drop of a remedy that works on an elephant works on a mouse. It's not weight That's dependent. Crazy. It's all energetic. So you just need a little bit, whether your dog is six pounds or whether your dog is 180 pounds. Whether your cat six pounds or twenty two pounds, it, it's just a little bit, which is cool. Yeah. But I would yeah. use muscle testing uh, in terms of Kennelly's question. I would use muscle testing to determine number one if that remedy is needed for the dog, and then you know a dosing protocol for what resonates best with the, with that specific dog. Yeah. Well, and going back to the the the, the long uh, chronic. Um, long-term chronic side effects, if you will, to, um, to, uh, vac vaccines, our Mr. Biddles had that. And we didn't know until we, until we, um, met with you with the optimal health analysis that a lot of his symptoms, the symptoms that he was having, we thought he always had herpes, right. And um, still maybe, I mean, maybe he did. Right. But he was, um, we didn't know when he was a kitten that he was vaccinated we didn't know what all he was vaccinated for, right? It was like back in the day, we didn't know anything. We were just like, bring him to the vet, yeah. do whatever he needs to be done, and then we'll bring him home, right? And they did all that stuff, all the combos, all the whatever. Um, we paid a bill, and then we brought him home. Yep. Well, turns out that he, he was resonating as vaccinosis of the feline herpes vaccine. And so we were able to detoxify him 16 years later, detoxify him, with Pam's help for what he needed of, um, of that feline herpes vaccine and um, his symptoms of, of herpes actually went away. <laughs> Isn't that funny? That's, I know. <laughs> that's so amazing. And then the Mr. Twister, when he would like have the tendency to roam and disappear every now and then, you know, uh -huh. my little buddy back there, you know, and we figured out that, oh my God, it just something in my head that said, that's, that's reminding me of the miasm for rate, one of the miasms for the rabies disease, you know, because one of the, one of the symptoms for animals that suffer from a rabies disease is that tendency to want to leave and just wander, you know, and be gone for days at a time. And then maybe they come back, you know, I mean, there's so many different characteristics or uh, miasms of that particular virus. And yeah. so that was like, ding, ding. I'm like, that sounds really familiar. And sure enough, that's what we found. Right. Yeah. Well, and I want to get into uh, a little bit in, in a minute for anybody that, that doesn't know Pam, really what you do, how you do it. We talk about the full health analysis all the time. We talk about uh, your muscle testing and, and, and homeopathy and all, and all the things. But I want you to be able to give people kind of a snapshot of what that is. Couple of questions coming in though, because I, and I hope that we're not missing too many. We're trying to do it on two different screens here. Kathy Scanelli, she said, what about a cat who, uh, who deals with feline hypersthesia is on gabapentin and chloropine. Chloropine, am I saying that right? I'm backing off the gabapentin five days a week. He's now only getting it two days a week and the other is six days a week. He's been, he has also been taking cat calm. Is that more, I'm thinking that maybe like a detox question as far as when you're dealing with having to be in a position like we were with Pooh Bear and uh, him being on steroids, the ways that we can wean them off or the ways that we can help mitigate the side effects of those chemical pharmaceuticals? I'm not well, quite I, sure if that's a question. Yeah, that's a really good question. I'm not familiar with the second drug she mentioned. Um, I'm probably saying it wrong. No. Sorry. But even if you are, I don't think I've ever heard of it. <laughs> so, yeah, okay. no, I don't, I don't know that I've heard of it either. That was, um, was that Catherine? Uh, that's Kathy. Uh, uh, oh, it's Kathy. Kathy Scanelli, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, so it, it's probably because when it comes to feline hypersthesia, are you familiar with feline hypersthesia, right? And yeah. so, so the gabapentin obviously is, is, um, is more of a, um, it, it's probably more of an antibiotic, the other one, because the mm -hmm. gabapentin is more of like a trying to, like a, it's a, it's a pharmaceutical calming drug, right? So it's like a, 
it's like a Prozac, if you will. And then okay. the other one is probably because uh, feline hypersthesia, correct me if I'm wrong, Kathy, but uh, feline hypersthesia um, results in a lot of licking and scratching and, and, mm -hmm. and chasing yourself and whatnot. So either it's another psychopathic drug or it is an antibiotic to try to keep the, you know, mitigate infection. Yeah, also. mitigate the, yeah. I would first want to identify or try to identify through energy what resonates as the root cause of the hyperesthesia because there's several different things that cause it and an overstimulated immune system is one of those things so and and the cause of the overstimulated immune system can be a vaccine or multiple vaccines or years of chronic vaccine you know vaccinosis or it could be something else so i would just i would want to figure out that first before well, I would determine what you know protocol or which way to go yeah, and I think that's to Anna's question. She said, do you detox uh, all cats the same or is it individualized for each cat? And I think that's a really important distinction that you are yeah. very good at, at making. It is individualized because, you know, we're not all the same. Cats are not all the same. They have different exposures. They have different epigenetics. Um, they eat different foods. They, you know, come from different lifestyles and, and you know, things like that. So every cat's body is different. So it's not a one size fits all with a protocol. And it's not a one size fits all with supplements. Um, there are typical things that I kind of go to, but their protocol to, you know, for how long and how much to use is going to vary depending on the animal. Yeah. And, and that's one thing I really, really love about you because, you know, us in, uh, in, in, you know, holistic pet care, holistic cat care. Um, we have a lot of people that come to us and they're like, what can I use for this? And there's like, we're like, okay, well, you can use this, or this is what we've used, or this is what we, you know, and we're throwing a bunch of things, but when it comes to like, like, especially, especially specific ones, right? Like allergies, we get a lot. And it's like, um, no, my vet doesn't know what they're allergic to. They want to spend a, you know, a million dollars. They want to spend a million dollars to do allergy testing. And the allergy testing, usually oftentimes in my experience over the past 15 years, comes back false positive or false negative for a, a lot of things. So we, so with you though, you look at this specific animal, you're looking at the specific cat finding what is resonating specifically with them. So you can get to that root without having to just throw a bunch of products. That's right. what I always tell people when they call. I'm like, yeah, we have stuff that can help allergies, but honestly, but maybe I could throw you a bunch of stuff. I could tell you a bunch of companies that do, and maybe you try them all, or you could save that money, go to Pam and find out what it is specifically that they need. And then maybe she'll recommend our products. Maybe she'll recommend one of these other many products that we um, would also recommend, but you'll know what's exactly going to work yeah. for your kitty. I think that's something that's really revolutionary in what you offer is that you really abbreviate that process of trying to get oh, to the root cause. The elimination game. And, it's, and the, it is a remarkable, it not only just saves time and suffering, but it saves so much money. money. So yeah, yeah, it's really an incredible gift. Well, service that you me and they'll say, I've done this and I've used this product, I've used this product and I didn't see a change. You know, I didn't see any difference and I was doing all of these things and I've tried all of these different foods. I've tried all these different supplements, you know, and they're like, I don't know what else to do. Yeah. I'm like, well, instead of, it's like, I compare it to like playing darts with blindfold on, you know, you don't, yeah. you can't see the target because your eyes are closed or covered. And yeah. that's kind of what it's like when you, when you don't use muscle testing to figure out what your cat needs. It's like, oh, you could try this and you could spend $50 on this product and, you know, another $75 on this test. And, you know, before you know it, you're like thousands of dollars in and you still don't have answers and your pet is still the same or worse. Yeah. You know, so I like to streamline it and let's, let's just, let's ask the cat what he needs because the body knows what it needs. It can tell me what it needs through muscle testing or energy testing. And we avoid all this, you know, waste of time and money, like you said. Right. Well, uh, can you explain a little bit about yeah, for those of you guys? Because this that, was the for, woo -woo. We have like we have a lot of people, almost seventy people on here right now. For for those that don't know what muscle testing or energy testing is, 
Can you explain that in like layman's terms? Yeah, so, so other people can understand it because you did that for us the first time and it was like, whoa, makes so much sense. I know, I know. Okay, so the foundation of muscle testing is essentially that we're all energetic beings. You know, we are an electromagnetical, you know, not magnetical, electromagnetic um, body. Everything that we do is electro electromagnetic, basically, you know, we're made of electrons and protons and neutrons and energy, okay? And without that energy, we wouldn't cease to exist. So everything's operating on an energy level. And so you can tap into that energy of the body and ask the body questions. And basically muscle testing or energy testing is a way to assess what the body's imbalances are and then figure out what tools it needs to rebalance. Muscle testing can be done with a person. So if you're doing it in person with a practitioner, you might have seen the arm testing, like some chiropractors use that. Our you know, does, yeah, yeah. Our, our chiropractor and does. Try that. to push your arm down, okay? So it either tells you that your body wants it or it doesn't want it. That's muscle testing. Um, you can do it through using finger tests. You can do it, um, you can ask questions, you know, using another finger test where you're pushing down on your own finger, kind of like you would an arm. You can do it standing. And this is the coolest one. So if you can learn how to do a sway test, <laughs> I, I still do this sometimes in the stores. So when I was learning and practicing muscle testing and I'd go to this grocery store, I need a supplement. And there's 10 different kinds of, you know, a vitamin or an omega or whatever it is that you, you're interested in using, right? How do you know which one is the one that your body needs? Because they're all manufactured different or whatever. So you can, the, learning the sway test is really cool because you use your body's own sway front to back to determine what your yes, no is. So you can ask the body, um, you know, is this good for me? And your answer will be a yes going one way or a no going another way. So um, what we should do is we should do a, a um, maybe with your VIP group, we should do a muscle testing Class oh, for, yes uh, oh my god for, like, some of these really cool ways to do it yourself and you can go practice standing in the in the aisles of the pet store you know is this food in my high in my pet's highest and best, best good is this supplement in my pet's highest and best good and it's just learning to ask those questions and learning to trust your body's answers because it will give you the right answer right um so it, it is fascinating. Yeah, we're, we're totally going to do that okay. for VIPs. For and I know sure. we're already getting close to running out of time, but I, there's so many questions coming Seriously. in. And I think that there's- oh, um, I am not in a hurry. So we can go as long as you need. Okay, cool. We, well, I wanted to, um, I did also want, what did I want to bring up? Oh, uh, really? um, oh, okay. So actually this is a very important um, point here because you were talking about in-person muscle testing. Um, mm -hmm. And Lindsay just po uh, Lindsay just uh, tagged the link to your optimal health analysis. That's what um, I want to talk about. Here, she she just pinned it. So um, this mm -hmm. is the this is the link that Lindsay Robbins. Um, if for all of you guys that are interested in in doing this, let's talk about though how you do it because you don't do it in person. You do mm -hmm. it remotely. So for like Noor that's in France right now. Mm -hmm. If she wanted access to your services or anybody that's not in. Texas or your, your area, right? right? Then, because we're not, and we didn't go, <laughs> we didn't drive to Texas for, for all the amazing help that you've given us and our cats. How does that work? Okay, so quantum physics is basically what muscle testing and energy testing is all kind of a part of the umbrella of quantum physics. And it's all based on the fact that energy is not limited by time and space. So the same energy that I can get from you guys through a screen is the same energy that I can get from you in person. And so when I work with pets, I use a photo of the pet and it doesn't even have to be a current photo. It can be an older photo. It can be one you took today or last year or a month ago. It doesn't really matter because the 
the essence of that animal's energy is going to be the same. So I use either my fingers or I use a pendulum, which tests energy, um, you know, and I work with that photo of the cat and I do the same evaluation that I would in person asking the body questions, you know, and I have a very long checklist that goes through and identifies. So talking about the vaccine and all that kind of stuff, let me show, share with you some of the ways that I know whether a cat has resonates with vaccinosis, if they're having some kind of immune, compromised immune system issue. Um, when I'm going through the testing process, things like immune system, histamine, cytokines, lymphocytes, immunoglobulin, vaccine, and then I go and check, you know, go through all the different vaccines, um, viruses, and it's usually either going to be herpes, distemper, caliche, or rabies, those will, those will resonate as a positive. Um, heavy metals like aluminum and mercury will come up and the chemical formaldehyde. So whenever I get those, I know what we're dealing with. And if lymphatic system comes up and liver comes up, I know the body is resonating with stagnation. It can't process all the toxins and the waste out of the body. So that tells me we need to support the lymphatic system first, get it moving, get it operating at optimal level, and then you go start your detox protocol using homeopathy and herbal liver support. And it's not typically just milk thistle. It's uh, more, I use what's called detox blend by Animal Essentials because it's a combination of herbal tinctures with red with burdock root, red clover, licorice, um, milk thistle, dandelion, which are all super powerful for detoxing and supporting the liver, but it's also supporting that that lymphatic system as well. Well, someone was asking earlier if you had a brand that you recommended uh, for milk thistle, and I think Animal Essential is a brand that we 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 enjoy, and, and that's the, the brand that you just mentioned as far as the, um, what was the product again? The oh. detox blend for yeah. the detox protocols. Um, right. There's also Herbsmith has a really good milk thistle. Um, there's a really good milk thistle or um, liver support by Rx Vitamins. There's yeah. Dr. Becker's. Dr. Mercola. Yeah, yeah, the Mercola right liver support. There's, there's a lot of really, really good brands out there. And it really depends on if your cat will take a liquid tincture or, you know, needs a powder. Unfortunately, what I have, I haven't found a powder version of, of a detox liver support yet that resonates beneficial. Yeah, that resonates. Um, really? I, I've just seen milk the soul by itself. I haven't seen a combo like Animal Essentials Detox Blend. In a powder I don't know oil. if I've told you, and this is kind of uh, kind of on topic, but whatever. But we um, recently bought over ten thousand um, organic dandelion seeds and oh. plan to plant them in our kitchen and in our yard because of all of the you know all, all of the, the benefits, benefits of, dandelion. of yes. dandelion for people and for and for our cats. Yes. Back to your health analysis, though, and I know that a number of the questions that were were kind of missing. I know there's a lot coming in, and it's actually harder to see on here than it is on here. Is it? Um, is that uh, so? We're talking about the individualized care, and your health analysis is is uh, probably one of the most thorough examinations I have ever seen. Anyone here that has had a health analysis done by Pam, um, I see so many people commenting yeah. how much you've helped and. <laughs> and be reminded they need to do another health analysis for a different cat um, because it is just such a game changer, even things that might be behavioral or that we thought were just behavioral uh, have just how thorough these health analyses are. Um, so if we've missed a question, I just want to say that, and Lindsay, thanks again for posting this um, yeah, link pop here. It, if pop we've it missed in a again. question. If we've missed your question, yeah. pop it in again. Um, but, but I want to give a think quick, about getting an individual health analysis. Right. So I want to give a quick um, a testimonial, if we, if I may, um, ab about your your services. So we met Pam last year um, in like October, I believe, and she, or or maybe sometime in the fall, and she um, 
she had reached out to us and said, Hey, I'm also in a holistic cat health and, um, would love to, you know, uh, maybe do some work together or whatnot. And I was like, Oh my God, somebody in, in, in holistic <laughs> for cat care for cats. We were like, yes, yeah. we immediately set up a zoom. We, um, we met together and we found out what it was that she was doing. And we had never heard of a, such a thing actually. No, um, we just called we it really woo woo. We were like, we were like, pretty woo -woo. we were like, okay. I mean, but we understood, right? We, we both have very, we've been through quite a journey and, um, it's, it's, since we've been, since we've joined forces <laughs> and we have, um, understand the power of understand energy, understand the power of energy, right. And what mm -hmm. energy is and what it can do and, and all of that. But we never actually, we never actually thought about it for our cats until we met Pam. And then when she was talking about it, it was like, oh, well, actually that, that, that does make sense. And then, but then when you were like, oh, but I, I do it remotely. Like I don't have to do it in person. It was like, okay, how's this actually going to work? Like, how is that actually going to work? I don't know if that's really so, so, um, immediately it was our Pooh bear who was over vaccinated. We know that his autoimmune disease came to, uh, was because of over vaccination. His, um, his symptoms were so bad. It's vascular in nature. He, his ears would bleed. His eyes would bleed. Um, he had ulcers and still does off and on get ulcers in his mouth often due to stress. And that once or twice, um, actually, uh, went inward in his mouth and punctured an artery where he was spewing blood out of his mouth. Guys, Literally that's a scary, scary thing when it comes out. to your cat. Right. And, um, and we knew that when we knew that this all started after he had gotten into a fight, he was an indoor outdoor cat. He had gotten into a fight with one of his, uh, with one of the outdoor neighborhood cats. And, uh, we had to rush him to the emergency vet. Of course that happened on a Sunday. And so we had to rush him to the emergency vet. We didn't have proof of vaccination. So they vaccinated him. He was two years old at the time. And, um, for three years up until last year, until, until we met Pam, we had no way of getting him off of steroids. We had tried every, we did that. We did all of the money. Like we paid, we all bought the, everything. Tried everything. We tried we everything. We, um, we tried our products. We, we used, you know, other people's products. We got it down to a very, very low dosage, which was awesome. Um, and the lowest dosage, in, in fact, our, our vet said that um, she'd never seen a cat with this type of disease that was still alive, only using that small dosage. But we know the long-term side effects of using um, using steroids. steroids, and he had been on it for three years. So we were still, you know, just really looking. After Pam did an optimal health analysis on Pooh Bear, um, it was it was literally within two weeks. It was October twentieth of last year. We know the date because that's the last time that we get, gave him a steroid. And he hasn't, he, he hasn't bled. There's no blood hanging out around the house. He'll that we still would have just little flare-ups that we yeah, contact he, you about. He has little flare-ups um, from time to time, but not anything like it was before. And we never have to turn back to, we, we've never had to turn back yeah. to steroids uh, to control his oh. autoimmune disease. So thank you so much for that. We well, have... Becky's question. I mean, I think, you know, people that are not familiar with what is this full health analysis, Becky asks, uh, how to read the cat analysis, the cat health analysis, and what things, and what things should we be thinking about and asking about once they receive the analysis? And I think that that's what I was trying to say with the how thorough this is. I mean, I feel like you explain um, you explain so much in in that that there's it kind of answers a lot of the questions that we might have or questions that we didn't even know that we had. Um, sure. And I think that what's wonderful about you too, and I want to. We call it Pam in your pocket, but you you also <laughs> offer at your paws. At your paws. At That's your paws is the Pam. service that we could not be more excited to sign up for because I. Uh, it's a small monthly fee. And if there's anything that happens when you have one of your cats has like this or that happening, we can we can uh, text you. Text which is you. why we call you Pam in her pocket. <laughs> um, we can, we can shoot you a text and be like, do you know what's going on? And she will be able to do, you know, a quick, um, I mean, it's not as thorough as the, as the optimal health analysis. So we do that for all of our cats. Um, uh, but, um, Trisha, Trisha replied to Becky and said, she's very patient. I'm always asking lots of questions. LOL. <laughs> I think a lot of us are. Yeah. I'm like, mm, we, just well, text Pam. Right. Just and Angela Pam. asks, this is, let's just get to brass hacks. How do we do the, the full health analysis and what is the cost? Okay, so on my shop.perfectlyholistic.com, if you go to services, it's the optimal cat health analysis. 
you purchase that at $65. Um, I send you a CAT information form to complete, to give me some history, give me the background, tell me your concerns, what's going on, tell me what you're feeding your cat, what supplements, what medications you're on, um, anything that you use on or in for your cat. Uh, list it out. I want to test it for you and make sure what you're using is actually beneficial and working. Because if it's not, why do you want to keep using it and spending money on it, right? Um, and then when I go through um, the analysis that I, like I said, I have a very long checklist. So I check foods, I check body systems, organs, glands, hormones, neurotransmitters, cells, trapped emotions. There's always an emotional component to an illness. That's a big, big, big one. Big, big, big one. Big. Um, cats can have pathogens like viruses, bacteria, fungus, molds, um, parasites. So I check those. They can have resonate with like chemicals, herbicides, pesticides, environmental chemicals, petrochemicals, like we were talking about earlier with the the, the inside scoop today. And they talk, you know, Dr. Becker Becker talks about how much chemicals our cats absorb from our own households and phthalates and, and some furniture and flame retardants and you know sofas and chairs and furniture and things like that. Wash, what about laundry detergent? Becky asked the question earlier about laundry detergent. Okay. That's one of the um, environmental chemicals on the list that we that I that may resonate. You know dryer sheets are another biggie. Candles are another biggie. Um, so I can tell you this is what's stressing your cat. And, and even environmental sensitivities like grasses, weeds, trees, pollens, flowers, you know, miscellaneous things like smoke, cigarette smoke, dust, uh, noxious energy like EMF. I mean, there's just so yeah. many stressors that can be uh, affecting our cats yeah. that we are not even aware of, but yeah. their body know. And they, they just, they tell me when I ask them, these questions. Yeah, well, and, she, and so so she she figures all this stuff out, and then she finds the protocol that works specifically for your cat to help mm -hmm. detoxify them from right. maybe the chemicals to help you know um, boost their immune system if their immune system needs boosting, or yeah. lower inflammation if there's inflammation in the in the body. All of these things that she does specifically for your cat with the optimal health analysis. Lindsay um, posted the link here in the comments. It's pinned, so that's where you get it. Now, I do wanna say it was it's $65 right now. Yeah. Right now. It's, yeah it's so you to need to get it now <laughs> if you wanna pay $65. Right well, right and now. I think, I mean, something yeah. that really poured us when we first met you was, um, you know, for a lot of people that they don't know what this is and what they're getting into. And we know 65 bucks is a good amount of money, right? I have yeah. no, I don't think there's anything I can think of in life in general that is a better investment in 65 bucks. Oh yeah. And I think I think that once <laughs> I mean 200 people, it would be more right. of along the line of what of how especially if you were is. doing this for yourself. If yeah. you go anywhere else, um you you yeah. would be paying at least two hundred dollars for this type of service. So so sixty-five right now, I know it's going up soon, um, not going up too much, not going up to two hundred. Um, but, but, but it um, should, and it, yeah. and it should, I mean, I think that the amount of, uh, individualized care that you give and each time. cat, and we know this from experience, time. having as many cats as we do and just how invaluable this resource is. And I think you know, we were talking earlier about con the conventional medicine. I think that this is such a, an in tandem thing, right? I mean, I think oh, all yeah. of us know that there is such a place for, uh, conventional medicine and there is nothing um we never want to convey that we're anti-vet or something someone called us anti-vet the other day and it's like no that's yeah. not at all <laughs> but it does mean that we can find other modalities that yeah. are going to be work in tandem to really abbreviate getting to the root of some of these issues and actually yeah, deal with the root of the issue and i think that's what is so mind-blowing about what you do and the service you provide to all of our all of our cats and, and 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 you know on a proactive measure for those of us that are proactive cat parents it's it's really helpful to, to have you're trying to be 
it's really helpful to, um, to, to have you um, as a resource for us because sometimes it, it doesn't warn a vet visit, right? Sometimes it's like we catch things as proactive cat parents, we catch things before they get really bad. And that's right. what we're, you know, we're pushing everybody to pay more cl closer attention to our cats so that we can catch these things before they get bad. And then we can reach out to you and find a protocol to where we're avoiding that vet visit. So we're avoiding that bill. Yes. But we're also avoiding the stress of having to take our cat to the vet. Right. Sometimes. Right. Sometimes. Well, I, I agree. yeah. Because it's hard to have that panic moment, you know, when you think is. something is really, yeah. It is. And you always have to follow that intuition. You know, sometimes even with using alternative care, there still is a time and a place to go in and get, you know, some tests run because right. just, sure. you never really know. I don't diagnose, I don't treat, I don't cure. Right. That's not my role. I'm not a vet, but a vet can run blood tests and run other tests and they can give you a diagnosis. And right. then I can take that and go, okay, based on this, this is what your cat's body really resonates well for. Let's give him these tools so that he can start to rebalance, you know, and yeah. remove the dis-ease in the body and create balance and restore that balance. When there's homeostasis, everything starts to work you know, as it should, you remove the stressors and, you know, the, the body can heal. So yeah. that is well, the ultimate goal. Yeah. And that's an, another thing that I love about At Your Paws with a monthly service. Well, is and Trisha that, asks, you know, when it is comes, the At Your Paws membership fee going up as well? I'm going to cut The you. other thing that you like about it, let us know. Is it going up? No, but it's currently full. I have oh, got, it is? and I have, I have, so many that I oh no I, okay I well, I was, so I, I was know, gonna brag I, about, I was I was gonna brag about that because the the thing that I love the most is that you know a lot of us say and for those of you guys that are in the at the pause uh service thank god we got in uh, uh, yeah. that uh <laughs> you know that that uh that you know we we you might say, like you test cats as they are right now, right? So it might be like, oh, that that product doesn't resonate for your cat. But we found working with you that, you know, some of our products even didn't resonate with Pooh Bear at one point. And then a week later or a month later, it's like, no, that's resonating. We need to use that. So it's right. not yeah. always, it's not that this product will never resonate with your cat because it didn't at this time. The energy, right. you know, is always, is always moving. Okay. Yes, changing. and the body yeah. changes. Yeah, the body changes. So what worked today may not work in six okay. months from now, or what's needed today may not be needed six months from now or a month from now. So you know, right. as things change, you just have that freedom to recheck and go, okay, let's see what you do need. Right. Great question from Jenny. She said, "Would it be beneficial for kittens or young cats that seem to be fine to have the full health analysis as a prevention for prevention?" Yes, and I've done this for Tabitha, who's probably with us today. She was going to adopt a kitten. And so I've done this for clients, you know, so I will take a, I'll, I'll read the cat picture, the kitten that you're thinking about adopting just to see, hey, is there anything going on that I don't know about that might impact my decision on whether I adopt this animal or not? And so I think it's very, very important to do that evaluation in the beginning when you're young because you don't know what their mother passed on to them. You don't know what they were exposed to sometimes. So if, if, you know, if the herpes virus does resonate, if there is a distemper virus resonating or pan Luke or anything crazy that's scary, you know, we can start to address that energetically. We can do um, energy clearing. We can start to support the immune system and, and really give the body the tools it needs. So maybe it can fight this thing and you may never have to deal with it. Right. They may I never be that. symptomatic. But if, if that cat is really sick, you know, like some of these shelter kittens, you just don't, they're exposed to so much in the shelter sometimes. Yeah. Um, if they're really sick, you want to intervene as quickly as you can, even if yeah. you don't adopt that person. And I think that's what Tabitha did. Um, she went back to the shelter and she told them, this is, this is what I'm find my person is finding energetically with this kitten. And it turns out that the lady that was fostering them 
was also in energy healing and Reiki or something. And so she was doing some, you know, some energy work on them and it, it, the kitten had a sister. And so they were immediately brought into more of a, you know, therapeutic care for those conditions. I but wonder. if Tabitha hadn't come to me and said, I don't know how healthy this cat is. Do you mind looking at him? You know, we don't know what would have happened. Wow. And I think, see, that's, you know, continue that's, to decline. So how cool is that? That's a brilliant question uh, from Jenny. I know we're missing a, a couple of them and I beg forgiveness because we do have to, yeah. go, we have to go soon. But you mentioned though, then those kittens being brought into more, more therapeutic care. And I think it's worth mentioning here for anyone who doesn't know. And I think Trisha mentioned it or someone mentioned it, that your practice that you have, basically, you're perfectly holistic. Um, you work with a uh, Reiki, what you, is a Reiki master? Oh, what, what's she the is name? a Reiki. I have, I have a team. So I have- And Lori, Lana, animal and communication. Lana. Yeah, so Lori is the, is the amazing girl who does Reiki for animals and pet, and pet parents. And then Lana, is, of course, is the animal communicator who you guys have used before too. So I have a great team. So you really yeah, do. you do. Have you have yeah. Yeah. So okay. So if you guys want to find out more information so about Pam, you can go to perfectlyholistic.com. P U R R R. Perfectlyholistic.com. Click on the click the link that um, Lindsay tagged here to get there quickly. Um, follow her on Facebook by clicking the link in the description. Um, she stays as accessible as possible um, to amazing. to all cat parents. Um, she's one of the most amazing people on the planet, um, for sure. So we're going to wrap this up. Um, we have a podcast that we're going to be talking about cat food um, today. <laughs> and um, in about 20 minutes on YouTube, if you guys want to join us, we'll be live on YouTube in about 20 minutes. Um for our podcast, but thank you guys all so much for joining us. And thank you, Pam, Pam. for being just amazing and, and wow. an awesome resource for all. Cat here. That's so uh, fun to be with you guys. Yeah. And you know, we're going to, we're going to uh, pick, uh, take you up on that muscle testing. Um, yes. VIP session. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. I just think it, it's so exciting. I know just the few minutes that we had, we actually had the pleasure of meeting Pam in person. Uh, in Denver last year, which was just an extraordinary experience. Um, you were supposed and to be here that, right now. I know. I was we were supposed, supposed to be there. Yes, I was supposed to fly out tomorrow. I'm really sad. Yeah. <laughs> but I do remember just those few minutes we had over dinner one night talking about muscle testing. And still, even after everything you did with Pooh Bear, still feeling like a little bit like woo woo, like, okay, you do oh, that yeah. girl, but I don't know. And just a few minutes with you explaining it to me, it blew my mind. That it really I remember the look on your face. You were like, what? Yeah. Hey, come here. You got to see this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're so grateful for you. We're all so grateful for you. Thank you for spending your Sunday afternoon with us. Yes. Uh, and I really look forward to encourage every, everybody here to, you know, if you haven't had the pleasure of um, having Pam have a look at your babies, then, then avail absolutely yourself do of so. that. Yeah. And follow her on Facebook um, so and that you Instagram don't miss. And, and an Instagram as well, if you guys are Instagrammers. Um, so that we can, so that you can, um, you know, always have Pam in your pocket in some way. <laughs> well, and they can also sign up for my, my newsletter that I do oh, that's every, oh, yes. on my website. Yeah, I tell, them, tell them where to do that. I know it's dot com. Um, there's a place you can join my cat community and I send out weekly information, you know, blogs, articles, videos, or whatever, just on podcast. Yeah. 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 So I'd love to have yeah, you guys. Okay. Yay. We love you so much, Pam. Yeah, thank, thank you so for joining us today. And thank everyone else too for, uh, for joining us. And uh, we will see you guys hopefully on, on YouTube at about 30, 20, I don't know what time it is, but in a few minutes. And we'll, and we'll set up the VIP with you. Uh, you know, yeah. I'll have your people yeah. call my people. Yeah, Lindsay, my people. write it down. We'll talk about it. <laughs> I love oh, you so good. much. We love you. I love you guys. Thank we'll see you guys you. soon. Happy thank Sunday, you. everybody. Bye, guys. Bye, Bye. Bye.